Hi guys, I'm Chuck, KK6USY. Welcome to Hammerdale Adventures. Today I've got something really fun for you guys, so stick around. So we're about ready to, to launch our Poseidon. That's a multi-band vertical. It's, it's an old design that we've put our own twist on. We've been doing a lot of testing on this thing in the fields, on the uh, nano VNAs, all kinds of different testing because we chose something that most people would not use, the toroid. Okay, I'll tell you guys the real reason we even thought of this is because I happen to have one or a couple of them handy for another project and I and I showed them to Ape and he's like well nobody likes using that one and I'm like well let's just try it and see what happens well <laughs> to our disbelief it happens to be the one that fulfills what we want to do I was up at HRO yesterday picking up a couple parts for this uh, not parts but uh, things that to help hook this thing up and I was talking to people in there the guys that work there and other people there and I asked them what they would want in a parks on the air type of an antenna. The general consensus was they would like to be able to take their 7300, their 710, their 991A, whatever it was, your base radio that a lot of guys take out portable that has a three to one tuner in it. And they'd like to be able to tune all bands with, that, with, the, with the internal tuner and not have to carry an external tuner. All these antennas we're gonna test will all I think pretty much tune up with a 10 to one tuner but they won't all tune all bands with a three to one tuner. So today that's what we're gonna check out. And I will say the community has reached out a lot. And I think I'm a, I'm a guy that's uh, the cup half full. I like to look on the bright side of things. I think the comments we got were to help us not to try to make us look ridiculous or whatever. I think people were truly trying to help us and, and make sure we didn't make a mistake. But I don't think they knew the testing that we have gone through already. One guy talked about real world. Well, I'm the real world guy. I take them out and test them. Ape likes to test bench test and get uh, all the uh, all the specs on how efficient they are. The one we picked is not the most efficient, but it does the most. And you guys will see that. And you guys will see that once I do the testing here. So let me get things set up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up in this field out here. It's a soccer field. Uh, I'm going to set the antennas uh, at least 50, 60 feet apart. I've got coax that's the same length, same brand, same size, all that stuff, guys. I've got, uh, and I'll show you guys all this stuff on the bench, so I don't want to re repeat all that stuff. So let me get this thing set up, and we'll start doing the testing. All right, guys, for this test, uh, I'm doing three tests today. First, I'm going to test, this is an antenna that I built on Jason's stream ham radio 2.0 and somebody bought it so i'm going to test it make sure it's good make sure i didn't mess up then we're going to test the green toroid and the red toroid these antennas are exactly the same except for the actual toroid the wrap is all the same they're all eight okay i've got my 710 we're going to do some of the testing with i went to uh, ham radio outlet yesterday i bought a second one of these so that I will have a choke on both of these. This cable, even though it doesn't look the same, it is the same. It's just wrapped up in a different size is all. RG8X, that's, where I, that's what a lot of people use. I want to use the same coax, same length. I've got a bunch of uh, adapters. Hopefully I have everything I need. When we get, when we start listening, and maybe we'll do some talking, I'm not sure. I've got an AB switch, so one, two. I got the uh, rig expert for testing. I will actually have to pull out my Comet to do six meter because um, this only covers the 30. I've got a chart here. It's just it's all written out right now. I'll do a nice chart by, before I in, before I finish the video. This is a vertical antenna. It's made to go on a 10 meter pole. It'll go on a 12 meter pole too. We are actually going to supply a little ring that goes to the top. I'll show you that in a minute. And what that does is puts the the top of the antenna about where it should be. We want the uh, the winder itself. We want it about around six six ish inches off the ground or so and then you have your counterpoises now this one is a done up antenna with a i basically brought a kit out except for the toroid this one i pieced together guys i have extra wire laying around to just piece it together so if anyone has the advantage it would be the red toroid but i don't think there's any real advantage there i did bring food guys because and water and it's this is good water so i don't know what that means i hope it's good extra good it says actually uh, like I said, I brought some food because I, I'm, I'm going to be out here a while. I'll probably be out here at least four hours, guys. I've already got an hour into 
at getting all my equipment that I brought out today together, okay? I will tell you, this is a DX Commander pole. This is a Soda Beams pole. If you notice, the Soda Beams is, is like a quarter inch taller, but I think when you actually put them up full height, the DX Commander is the hair hauler, taller. They're basically the same. The color's different, but, the, but they're basically the same, and I've tried both of them for this antenna, and they both work, along with... Uh, the Pactina is identical to this pretty much, guys. Almost the exact same thing. So I, if I was you guys, I'd uh, check prices if you're buying one of these and buy the cheapest one. They're all basically the same. Okay, guys, so I'm going to set up in this uh, secret location. It's a uh, top secret location for doing antennas testing. Okay. All right, really, it's, it's just a soccer field here that I'm not even sure gets used anymore right now. But I have room. I don't have room at home to do this. All right, guys, so I have the red toroid antenna hooked up right now. I'm going to start with that one because I don't think it's going to tune all the bands that way. Nothing's already tuned. Look, they won't be anyhow because they're different antennas. So, And what I've done is hook the antenna directly to the radio, nothing in line. Later, we'll hook it to a uh, AB switch so we can uh, listen back and forth quickly, at least for listening. So it shouldn't... I mean, this antenna is not built for... 1.845, but we're going to try and see if it'll tune. Here we go. And it won't tune that one either. Let's see, that was at, uh, well, that said infinity, so I didn't expect it to tune that one, guys. Let's see if it'll tune here. Looks like it's going to. Yeah, let's see, it was, it was 6.8 here, so I don't really want to I'm going to try and tune it. I don't think it's going to tune. It doesn't tune. This is why we didn't go with the red, because I was out using it one day thinking, oh, this is going to be great. I couldn't get on 20 meters with my internal tuner. And it won't tune that one either. Try it one more time. All right, well, it won't tune 17 either, guys. Let's try it. Oh, it's going to tune there. This is, this was set five to one. KK6 USY testing, one, two, three. Yeah, so tune there, tune 15, tune it. And it's gonna tune that one up also, guys. So we'll check that off. All right, let's tune it. So that's good. Let's tune it. And it should tune here because it was it was 2.2 here versus 1.8 of the green. So that's good. So not bad. It got five bands out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bands. Five for, five of nine. Okay. Let's hook the green up and we'll test that next. Okay, I think we'll start backwards this time work our way back to 160 so let's tune it all right it's going to tune that one so we'll mark that one good we'll tune here it should tune and it will all right all right that worked let's see if it'll test it'll tune And it tunes there also. All right, let's tune it. And it's going to tune that one. Let's tune. It looks like nobody's in that band anyhow right now. And it tunes that one, so that's another good one. Now, see, 20 is a band I love to use when I'm out at Poda or Soda, guys. And that red one will not tune that with the internal tuner. I'm sure it will with uh, with a with an external tuner. But I'm, we're trying to get this to work what most with what most people think is tune it. And screw this. The sound came up a little bit. So we're tuning it. I may get an answer back if if Andy's listening. 
KK6 USY testing. Anybody on the frequency? Andy, you around? W6AD. So 40 is good, guys. Let's tune it. This would not tune with the other one, but it's going to tune with this one. KK6 USY testing. 160 was 7 to 1, so chances are not good. Another nighttime band, so let's just tune. Nope, it won't tune that one. That's fine. We didn't make this antenna for that. All right, there we go, guys. Hope this is helpful. So turn the tuner off, and we'll just listen, since this guy's fairly strong. This is non-tuned. So even though you can't tune, you can still hear on the river. It's about the same. And let's just go down. We'll go down, and we'll try to tune. For some reason, maybe this thing will tune now. And we'll see it won't tune. Because I want to really see the difference. Let, 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 let me take you another few minutes from you and just make okay, another nice. test. Kyorix, just a couple yeah. of seconds. Your time is already. So let, really? let me do let me do another test with you, okay? Okay. So this is number one, 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 one. This is Sorry, the volume two, was actually two, up. Two, two. And this is the two together, two together, two together, over. <laughs> two together was better. So that guy's the same on both antennas. This is green now. Within 20 miles of Salem, uh, Polk County, over. Oh, very good, yeah. When we're on ground wave, I'm, uh, the shampoo is uh, just near Newburgh. So he's S3. Oh, Newburgh, okay. No, where Newburgh is. And Salem the red one John. will not work here, so let's we'll see if it'll still hear. Getting old, but I have still hearing, but just won't tune. doctor's prescription is get back on the radio, so I'm following doctor's orders, over. Love it, love it. Well, thank you very much for uh, the contact. I really appreciate the call, and uh, have a great rest of your day down in Salem, 7-3. Roger, thank you. W2NQ, Hamilton John, seven. Salem, thanks. Oh, that's nine. Whiskey 7, Alpha, Yankee, Quebec, QRZ. Kilo, Kilo 6, Uniform Sierra Yankee. Kilo, Kilo 6, Uniform Sierra Yankee, you are 5-9 into uh, Northwest Jordan. All right, I got you about a five and three, five and three. Um, unfortunately, my antenna is not tuned here. I'm just out trying an antenna, so it's good, uh, good feedback there. Thank you. So, guys, uh, hopefully this is helpful, and in, in, if not showing you what it does, but at least letting you guys know why we picked what we picked. Like I said, I was up in HRO the other day, yesterday, matter of fact, and the consensus there was people would rather have something that. They didn't have to take an extra tuner with them to actually get it to tune right. What did we get? So we had, what, nine bands? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bands that... So we had nine bands that we tested. The red one was good for one, two, three, four, five, so it didn't get four of them. The green one's good for everything but 160, so eight out of the nine. And even 80 is not a band that... that this antenna is supposed to be really good for. I mean, you could throw a longer, uh, make it longer than 25 feet and extend it, and that might help. But if, say, if you're on a poda and it's getting late and 80 is the only thing open and you can make a contact on it, hey, <laughs> if it works, it works, right? All right, guys, here's the chart that I put together. Uh, X means that it did tune on that band. And uh, I did forget to get the uh, SWR for six meter, but it must be, I think it was around two something. So go ahead and pause it if you need to uh, look closer at it, guys. So like I said, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. And, uh, and I do think that the, uh, the feedback that Ape was getting on the tour rides was more to help than not, not to say, hey, you're doing it wrong. I do think it was more of that. And to me, this is real world stuff. And like I said, if you, that's the problem with ham radio sometimes is uh, everybody goes by what they've heard, what they've read, and sometimes they might not do. Like I said, we weren't going to try the green one. We were going to go with the red one or a, one or a 43 or something like that. The 43 has real promising numbers also. Actually, the green one beat pretty much almost everywhere as far as efficiency. You guys, I'll, like I said, I'll link Ape's video down there for you guys so you can hear that, so, so you can go see that. But uh, 
the, the 43 and the 61 were a little bit more efficient in certain areas than others. I haven't tried the, I think it was a 61. I haven't, or I think it was 61. I haven't tried that one. I don't have that toroid that I know of. I might have one, but maybe we will. I mean, we'd much rather have it be the 43 because we already have those. And these, these green ones are hard to find, guys. We, we, had, we found 50 of them and bought all 50. So hopefully this helped with you guys uh, and you enjoyed the video. Well, get that, that like. If you're new here and you want to see more content like this, and we're going to have more stuff on this, this particular antenna, I'm sure, uh, make sure you uh, subscribe. Hit the bell, hit all. That way you get all my future videos. I'm Chuck, KK6USY. This is Hammer Adventures. Thank you for spending your time with me. I know your time is valuable, and I do appreciate it, guys. 73 all, and I hope to get you guys on the airways.